Okay, um, so my name is Daniel Langdon. I've been a, uh, an IT consultant uh, here in Denver for the past couple of years, and Denver has been really great to me, and I've been looking forward to this opportunity to give a little bit back. Um, so I'm going to be giving you a talk about uh, ASMJS, but um, since I don't have time to uh, do a, a super deep dive into the code right now, I'd like to uh, start out by telling you a little bit about my motivation for being a, an early adopter of this uh, system that you may have never heard of. So to begin, so to begin, um, who can tell me what this is? Fractal. <coughs> Mandelbrot fractal uh, was discovered by the late Benoit, Benoit Mandelbrot, who passed away just a few years ago. And um, he uh, pointed out that this figure in its amazing complexity is actually defined by extremely simple mathematics. Um, in a PBS interview, he said, as a matter of fact, all you have to do to compute this is add and multiply. So why then was this not discovered by, say, Pythagoras or Archimedes? You have to do a lot of it. <laughs> right. Because to do, a, to do a figure like this, you have to do the additions and multiplications billions and billions of times. And this software is something I wrote in my spare time, um, just out of an interest in HTML5. I was reading a book. They were talking about the canvas element, the web workers, so you can parallelize your computations and everything. Um, but to me, the elephant in the room is that while we have all this great new stuff in HTML5 to let us draw however we want, um, do parallel computations, do video, audio, and, and all of that fun stuff, uh, we're still doing all of our computations in JavaScript, which uh, for all the wonderful things about it, which I think it is a great language, it's uh, a, a dynamic uh, interpreted language, uses duck typing. So, if you're doing something like, you know, you want to do billions and billions of uh, additions and multiplications of floating point numbers, it's probably not the best, uh, best solution. But if you're working in the browser, then that's what you're stuck with. And ASMJS steps in to fill in that void. Um, this started out as an experimental feature in Firefox. Um, I thought perhaps it would be a flash in the pan. Maybe they wouldn't find the killer app for it. Um, I wish, personally, that instead of showing you this, I could show you the Unreal Citadel demo, which uh, I'm told was a port of uh, uh, an Unreal demo, which is a game engine that lets you walk around a castle in 3D in a web browser, but unfortunately they took it down and replaced it with something that isn't nearly as good. It's called Tappy Chicken. I have no idea why they did that. <laughs> um, but the good news is, um, um, just last month, even after I had signed up to give this talk, uh, Microsoft has announced that uh, they're going to uh, put support for ASMJS in uh, the new iteration of their browser stack. And um, not only that, but Google is too, I think. And Microsoft also announced that um, uh, support for ASMJS was actually in the top ten uh, list of features requested for uh, the new version of Internet Explorer. Um, so if you want to know exactly what this is, um, it's ASMJS is not a library, you know, like the name suggests, like Prototype.js or AngularJS. Uh, what it is is a C-like language embedded inside JavaScript. And, you know, the genius of that is that um, when a browser that doesn't know how to do ASMJS encounters it, um, the browser can still run the code, albeit slowly. Now, if it's something like the Unreal <coughs> Citadel demo, it's going to be uh, impossible to use. But you know, if we're doing something like this, uh, yeah, you can draw these pictures with Internet Explorer. It'll just be really, really, really slow. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. Now, now that I've give you, given you the general overview of what it is and what you can do with it, I'd like to uh, show you uh, just a little bit of the code to, to round out my presentation this evening. So, um, 
What we have here is some actual ASMJS code. Now, I didn't do any of the code for the user interface or you know, clicking the buttons or that sort of thing in ASMJS. I mean, only the mathematics. So one question that probably comes to your mind then is, well, since JavaScript is duct type, how do you embed uh, strongly typed C code in the language? And here's how. Um, so this is an, a, a function I'm using as an example called the compute row, and I'm sorry if this isn't big enough. Sh should I make it bigger? Yes. Let me see if I can make that bigger real quick. Okay, is it visible to everyone now? Yeah, better <laughs> things. Okay, here we go. So here we have a function called compute row. It has a num number of parameters that are passed in, you know, regular JavaScript code. And this is just, a, just really, just barely skimming the surface of how ASMJS uh, syntax works. So uh, at the very beginning of the function, we assign each parameter to itself in such a way as to do an operation which in regular JavaScript would convert it to that type. So for example, the first three, canvas width, canvas height, and limit, all say, you know, parameter equals plus parameter. And that unary plus normally just tells JavaScript that something's a number, and it would if it wasn't a number, it would convert it. But since it is a number, it does nothing. So when uh, ASMJS sees this, it says, OK, this is a function, and these first three um, parameters are 64-bit floating, floating point, point numbers. The fourth one here, it says max equals max or zero. Well, or is kind of a weird operator in JavaScript. You know, JavaScript normally uses 64-bit floating point numbers for everything. But um, with the or operator, both operands are converted to a 32-bit integer. So when you say max equals max or zero, that just has the effect of converting it to a a 32-bit integer since, you know, any 32-bit integer or itself is the integer you started out with. So once again, uh, a standard JavaScript interpreter is going to want to run through that and think, well, this is stupid. What is this for? It's like, well, it's a, it's a special syntax, but when ASMJS sees this, then the magic starts happening. Now, um, there is a tool for generating ASMJS code, which I actually did not use for this particular project, but I just wanted to point it out. It's called mscripten. Uh, it converts C or C++, C++ code to JavaScript code, and it normally targets ASMJS. <coughs> E-M script E-N. Oh, okay. It's uh, mscripten. There. Um, but, but one thing I've read MScript and does, which I think is pretty amazing, is you'll see here at the very beginning of the ASMJS code, you declare everything inside a function, which we mark it with use ASMJS, like use strict. We have three parameters here standard library, foreign, and heap. Uh, standard library gives you access to like the standard functions, like uh, the math functions. Foreign allows you to pass in. Uh, non-ASMJS code to interface with it. And then there's heap, uh, which functions like an array. And the magical thing about heap is that mscripten uh, does some magic under the covers when you uh, allocate memory in your C code to, uh, to use that array to simulate memory. It's completely backwards compatible with regular JavaScript code, um, but, but it goes into that paradigm of you can you know, have it compiled in one browser and interpreted in a browser that doesn't support it. Um, I actually wrote my own little code generation tool, um, which, um, since you may know, these uh, images are defined in terms of mathematical functions. I wrote um, code that uh, interprets, you know, what we think of as like standard mathematical language. So. I can type in a completely different mathematical function here, and I know this function generates a beautiful plot. So just to illustrate how it works, I've simply changed the uh, 
uh, the syntax or the function here to say instead of z squared plus c, we want to draw a plot for uh, for sine of z over c. And you can see this one takes uh, a good bit of time to load, even with ASMJS. Um, but it draws a, it, it draw it, it uh, uses that interpreter to draw a completely different image. So. Uh, this is just uh, one small example of the power you get with ASMJS, you know, to fill in, you know, the, the void left by having to deal with a uh, dynamic language for doing heavy-duty mathematics. Um, that's my talk. Are there any questions? So is that C language, uh, or the version you showed, yeah. is it being compiled? Yes. Um, so I, I actually did not, so the tool mscripting I talked about um, takes C code and converts it to JavaScript code that's compatible with ASMJS. Um, but I, I took like a hybrid approach. I wrote some ASMJS functions uh, by hand, which is normally not encouraged. And then I wrote code that would convert mathematical notation into a series of invocations of those functions and variable assignments. Does that answer your question? Sorry. I mean, so you're going through several layers there. But ultimately, you're compiling some code to create more speed. But, correct? correct. So ultimately, the browser receives JavaScript code in this special ASMJS syntax. And if the browser supports ASMJS, the browser compiles it. Otherwise, um, it gets treated as you know any other JavaScript code. How can you know for sure if the browser is running it in the optimized ASMJS mode or not? If you, that's a great question actually. In the uh, development console in Mozilla Firefox, it will show you a compilation error if it didn't work. And believe me, I've seen lots of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what kind of performance gains are you looking at? Um, well, com compared to other browsers, um, like it's uh, lightning fast compared to IE. We'll see how it is with their new version. Um, Chrome um, is actually extremely well optimized. It, it closes the gap a good bit. But I would say, um, I, I don't know. Well, the only statistic I know right off the top of my head is that there was an announcement made by the ASMJS team that compared to running the code in a native C, C uh, compiler, it's a slowdown factor of only, I think they said 1.5. So it's close to native performance compared to anything else you can get on the web. Uh, I have a bunch of code uh, for a DSP written in uh, SSC assembly. Is there a way I can transpile it into ASMJS or do I rewrite it to C++ or how do I do that? Um, I understand that mscripten uses an intermediate language called LLVM and I didn't mention this before but there's actually a, a separate tool I think you have to use to convert from C to LLVM and then to uh, ASMJS. So I think um, you're going to need some kind of a uh, compilation tool that will target LLVM or transpile to C. Yeah, is ASM converted to uh, JVM bytecode or is it converted to machine language? Um, when you say JVM, you mean Java Virtual Machine? Yeah. Well, it, it doesn't have anything to do with Java as far as I'm aware of the implementation. I, as far as I understand, it's con con uh, compiled to something like machine code, but I don't know the exact specifics. I'd have to look into that. I believe that is a subset of the JavaScript language that the interpreter of the browser can interpret, or like a JIT type thing, but within JavaScript into machine language that works with your cores, your GPU, you name it. And that's how it gets that speed bump. Right. And in addition to using ASMJS, it also uses <coughs> web workers to parallelize the computation for, uh, for maximum efficiency in this particular application. Um, yes? Do you have to hand code the web workers? Uh, yeah, you, you, uh, unfortunately, the uh, tools do not generate the web workers for you. And you're still stuck in the web workers with having 
to pass strings back and forth as messages, which is one of the intrinsic limitations of the web workers, you may be aware. Um, but basically, you have like a, a separate instance of ASMJS running this code on each of your uh, web workers. Um, how does ASM handle the implications, security implications of running native code in your browser to drop web arbitrarily? Is it a sandbox that, that runs in that you can fix that in the world or, you know? Well, uh, you know, that's a good question, and I, can, <laughs> I guess I could speculate a little bit about the answer. As I pointed out, if you're using mscripten, you're, uh, getting at, you're using that uh, array to simulate, well, in the JavaScript, uh, allocated memory, but of course it is treated as uh, compiled code. I don't know what kind of vulnerabilities there might be in the uh, transpiler that might um, somehow allow uh, somebody to access something in the machine outside the browser, but uh, as far as I'm aware, I think it should be sandboxed just like any other uh, JavaScript uh, application is, but uh, you never know, uh, you know what uh, vulnerabilities are beneath the surface. Was there one more? <laughs>